I guarantee you that you're not going to be using woodwinds as much as you're going to be using strings or brass percussion synths, etc. And obviously there are exceptions, but generally the most important section in the orchestra are going to be the strings. So if that is true, then why should you take in your template as much as space, RAM, CPU, loading, you know, woodwinds and strings? Because I guarantee you that the woodwinds libraries take as much space as the strings libraries. So if that's true, and we have limited resources in our system to load libraries, meaning limited amount of RAM, CPU processing power, then it makes no sense that the amount of RAM that the Woodwind libraries take in our template is the same than the space that the strings libraries take. You can if you got access RAM, but generally my approach is different. I got this question asked in a class and it was like, I maxed out my computer. And I'm looking at my template and I've got all these like 30 or 40 tracks of like woodwinds tracks and I almost never use them. So let me explain what are the 20 or 30 main woodwinds tracks that I've got in my three, 400 tracks template. You can screen grab the first frame after this intro, but basically in this video, I'm going to explain two things. First, replicating woodwinds figures like runs, ribs, all the ear candy that they can do. It's very hard with samples, so better have it pre-recorded. That's the first thing of the video. And second thing, Tim Brickley, the woodwinds, they're very very, very rich. So again, what are the patches that I've got loaded in my template? Section here of Woodwinds Ensemble. Here's the thing with Woodwinds. What do Woodwinds do? Do they do melodies? For sure. They do rhythms. They do counterpoints. Yes, 100%. They do solos. They double. But also, there's something about Woodwinds that we don't have with the rest of the orchestral instruments. That it is, they, they are very agile. They can do things very quickly. So the gestures, the flourishes, the ear candy, the, all these things that they can add, the runs, the rips, the thing, the atonal rips, things like that. Those are musical figures that better get recorded. Otherwise, all these rapid moving from one note to another, when it's one instrument, okay, but when it's multiple instruments, you bet they are not playing perfectly in time. And that not playing in time is what creates that type of thing. The same thing happens with an strings runs, like an entire 16 by section doing a fast run. Not all of them are doing it, but they begin and they end at the same time, the same spot. But in between, there's a little bit of a you know, these curtains or these hunts are not perfectly in time. Otherwise, it would sound like samples playing staccato notes. So that it's better to have something like this where everything is recorded. The major scales. Now, transitioning to the second part of the video, the second concept that you have to understand is that woodwinds are a family that timbrically is very rich. The colors, I'll explain this later in a second. Now, recreating that woodwinds and sample type of sound with individual patches like flute one, flute two, you know, oboe. It takes a lot of time and effort. And so sometimes it's way more efficient, it's faster to just use a woodwinds ensemble. My recommendation is having several woodwind ensemble patches because they will have the different color. Some of them will sound more like flutes and clarinets and another one will sound more like double reeds, right? With the oboes and English horns, things like this. Each individual instrument sounds very different. Violin and a viola, slightly similar. Violin one, violin two, exactly the same. Violin one and cello, similar sound, it's still different, the same. Let's talk about clarinet and oboe, just two different families. You know, they could be literally sitting in different families. They call them woodwinds because somehow they're made of wood, right? But it's completely different. The instruments completely different town. They sound completely apart. Oboes and English horns or bassoons. Okay, now kind of like they, it's double rich, similar family, and they sound similar. But again, timbrically, it's very rich, that family. And so when we are voicing, when we are arranging, depending on if we overlap, let's say we've got flute, flute in octaves, and then we've got oboe in oboe, we're gonna get one sound. If we've got flute, oboe, flute, oboe, like this, it's gonna we're gonna have a different sound. If we've got flute, flute, oboe here, and oboe here, it's a different sound, right? It's more homogeneous, more heterogeneous, in between type of thing, right? So these things will change the sound a lot. Now, if we are trying to do that with individual, let's say we're gonna load flute one, flute two, oboe one, oboe two, and we're trying to build those textures, great, we have a lot of control, but it's gonna take forever. Instead, my take on this is, I prefer having the woodwinds ensembles, right? And so for example, this one here, and if I'm doing something like, or
right? So what you hear is tone type of, now if I go up here, I've got another one, that's gonna sound slightly different. And it is because it has been orchestrated differently. Here we go. slightly different tone. It has a little bit more of weight of flutes and clarinets than oboes, so the double reeds don't stand out as much, different orchestration. So if I want that a little bit more in the clarinets and flutes, I'm gonna go for this part. If I want a little bit more of the double reeds, I'm gonna go for the other one. If I want more like the sounds in octaves, I'll, go, I'll select one of these patches that I just showed down here where I've got the woodwinds in octaves. And so to me, those are pre-built, pre-orchestrated. It's just a patch, it's just different libraries. But to me, it's like listening to those libraries, trying to understand how it was arranged or orchestrated, and then just having them there. Then I have things like chords. And you can see here, this is a major chord. Right, major chord, major minor. So. And sometimes you want this. Or something like. Exactly, exactly. Crap the f ah! 